In the last video, we looked at how to approximate integration. Now what we're going to look at is a technique that's called iterated integrals. So iterated meanings, means doing a process over again. Well, what we're going to do is just look back at the, the fox population that we had been looking at before. So what if I wanted to approximate the amount of fox in that little region, what I do is that I was using the an estimate for the density. So I used the we were using the northeast value, which you know this box represents this little box here. So that we were using a density of one, and and I used that density and I multiplied it by my area, which was a change in x of 30 times a change in y, which was 25. So on that little region, on that little box, the number of fox equaled 30 times 25 times 1. So my area times my density. So what I can do is I can split up this idea of summing. So what I can do is I can think about my total population as being the density times my x value so density times all of my x values. And then multiply it by the change in y. To think about what that means uh, in terms of this bottom row, so this bottom row here, the idea is we can say that the total population equals all of my density times x, so 0 times 30 plus 1 times 30 plus 0.6 times 30 plus 1.2 times 30, and then we can ignore that. So that's my, my total population. That's my density times x. That's this. And then I just need to multiply all of those by my same change in y, which was 25. And this will get me the area times density, because I'm multiplying all of my, the 25 is getting distributed in. And when I multiply the 25 times 30, it gives me uh, the base area. And then all of these values are my density. So it's no different, really, what I'm doing. But what it sets up is this idea of an iterated integral. Because if we take this and let delta x and delta y approach 0, instead of talking about the sum of these finite numbers, what I'm going to do is an infinite sum of infinitely small change of x and change of y's. And we get this iterated integral, so a double integral in this case, where I'm, I have an inside integrating f of x with respect to x, and then I'm going to integrate that whole thing with respect to y. And it's all following this idea of taking sums. So let's look at an example of that. So let's say that you know, R is a rectangle, so our base R is a rectangle, where X is between A and B, and Y is between C and D, and F is some continuous function on R. Then the, the integral of F over R is equal to the integral, the iterated integral of F dx dy, or f dy dx. And so what that looks like, so our integral over the region r is equal to this double integral. So I've got an integral with respect to y, and then an inter inner integral with respect to x. And notice that I can the order doesn't always matter. I could always, always also write that. Um, I could also write the same thing as the integral 
x to a, x to b, integrated y to c, y to d, the integral of f x y dy dx. Careful thing to recognize is that these limits are going with dy, so we integrate the inner first, and then we work to the outer. So we can use this iterated integral to evaluate or find volumes of these two variable graphs. So let's look at, um, on the next page, we've got a, a representation of what we're looking at here to find this volume. So the idea is uh, we've got an equation for z in terms of x and y. So we've got z as a function of x and y. And here is the graph. It creates this slanted roof. And our x values are going from 0 to 8, and our y values are going from 0 to 16. So if I wanted to find out what is the, the volume inside this you know, slanted roof house, let's go, uh, let's have our outer integral be y. It doesn't really matter. So our y values go from 0 to 16. And I'm putting y equals, though I don't need to. And our x values go from 0 to 8. And then I'm going to integrate my z. dx dy. OK, so now this is our first time doing this. So let's, let's take it a little bit slowly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the antiderivative of that inside with respect to x. So it's saying that x is our variable. So when we do that, um, our outer integration stays the same. We get y is 0 to 16. And now we're going to get rid of this integral because we're going to take the antiderivative. So we get 12x minus 1 eighth x squared. And here's where it's tricky. We've got this 1 eighth y, and I'm taking the antiderivative with respect to x. So the y in this regard is just a constant. So we get minus 1 eighth y x. And this whole thing is evaluated from 0 to 8. And then that's being differentiated with respect to y. Not differentiated, sorry. And then we're going to integrate that with respect to y. OK, so now we put in our limits. So we're going to get 0 to 16. Putting 8 in, we have 12 times 8 minus 1 over 8 times 8 squared minus 1 over 8 times y times 8. And then if I plugged in 0, everything goes away. So dy. Simplifying that. We get the integral from 0 to 16 of 96 minus 8. So let's just write that as 88. So of 88 minus y dy. So now we take the we integrate with respect to y. So we get 88y minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 16. So this equals, plugging in, 88 times 16 minus 16 squared over 2. And that approximates the volume of our, uh, of our little shack here with a slanted roof. One way to think about that, going backwards, just in case we wanted to really sort of clue this in, is that our inner integral, our inter, or, or rather our inner integral was this. You know, the entire integral was 0 to 16, the integral of 0 to 8, of 12 minus 1 fourth x minus 1 eighth y dx dy. But to 
to take this, what that is saying, thinking about our graph over here, is that we're going to take, we're going to integrate from x is 0, remember here's our x-axis, all the way to x equals 8, and what we're integrating is this height. And so what that's going to find is this, that finds that area, this inter, or rather inner integral. So this would find, you know, a bunch of these, this finds that area. And then I'm going to add up that area all the way from y equals 0 up, and t up to y equals 16. So in other words, I'm going to sum up all of these areas. And when I sum up all of those areas, what I get back, so summing up all of those areas, what I get back is the volume. So trying to really understand the, the, the theoretical or conceptual understanding of this iterated interval. So order doesn't really matter. Uh, as I said before, uh, your in, inner integral can be in terms of dx, or it could be in terms of dy. But sometimes um, it's easier to have one versus the other. So let's think about that. Uh, we've got the density at a point x, y on a triangular metal plate. So this is some plate, and the density is varying. The density here, uh, density depends on x and y. And we want to express its mass as an iterated integral. Well, let's think about like y changing. Our y value goes from, from 0, and as I go up, all of a sudden I hit this line. And if I'm at y0, all I go up, I go up and I hit this line. So my, my y value can go from 0 all the way up to 2 minus 2x. So since my upper limit for y is in terms of x, because my upper limit of y is in terms of x, anytime that happens, what, what you're typically, typically, typically going to do is have that be your inner limit. So I'm going to integrate my density. with respect to y. So for example, I'm going to, you know, choosing some point here, I'm going to multiply all the densities times y. And that, that would be this, summing up all the densities as I change y. And then I'm going to sum up all of those, these vertical strips, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And then what that's going to do is, sorry, what that should have looked like, I had that vertical strip. Now I'm summing up, I'm summing up all of these vertical strips from x equals 0 to x equals 1, which will get me the total density times that area. So this is an example where our limit is actually an equation in terms of my other variable. So my upper limit for y was in terms of x. Okay, so now we are looking at the... density, which is 1 plus xy, over this region defined by x and x squared. And what we do there, that line that we just drew, um, 
looks at that, you know, our y values are going from x squared to x. So that's why we're going to integrate from x squared to x. And what we're going to do is we're going to integrate that density with respect to y. So our y values are changing, and they're changing from x squared to x. And what that does is it thinks about, it, it, it considers multiplying all of my y values by the density. So the change in y value times the density. Then what I need to incorporate is that my x values are changing, and my x values are changing from 0 to 1. And so when I consider that x change from 0 to 1, uh, now I'm multiplying by the change in x. So I've got the change in x times the density times the change in y, and that's my density times change in it, or density times area, which is my mass. So now if I do that actual integration, and I'm integrating with respect to y here on that inside, so x is considered a constant, and I'm evaluating it from the limits from x squared to x. So then what we need to do is we need to plug in those limits. We need to plug in x, and then we're going to subtract it from when we insert x squared. So we're plugging in our limits just into the y. So that's when we plug in x, and then we're going to subtract that, and now we're going to plug in x squared. So the y turns into x squared, and then we're going to get x times x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. Okay, before we integrate, let's simplify that a little bit. Now that it's simplified, now it makes it significantly easier for us to take the antiderivative of. Now I shouldn't have that integral sign up front. Let's erase that because I've, I've taken the antiderivative. So we've, we've done the integration. Now we just do, need to evaluate that, ex that expression from from 0 to 1. And we know that when we plug 1 in, uh, all those x's just turn into 1. And when we plug in 0, it's just going to be 0. So we get this nice fraction, 1 half plus 1 eighth minus a third minus a twelfth minus 0 from when we plug in 0. And just to, just to finish with an actual answer, let's get to a common denominator and have a final result of 5 twelfths. Or, sorry, 5 24ths. All right, this is an interesting problem here. What we're looking at is a city which occupies a semicircular region of radius 3. And it's bordering the ocean, so below that city is, is an ocean. And it's really important for us to try to be close to the ocean as much as possible, because the ocean brings happiness. But this problem is less about happiness and more about just proximity to the ocean. So consider, uh, you know, imagine you're a real estate agent and you're thinking about how many houses are close to the ocean, because the location matters. So what we're looking for is the average distance from points in the city to the ocean. So let's just choose a bunch of random points. And what we're going to think about is the collection of all points in that semicircular semi region. And think about how far are those points from the ocean. Well, the distance that they are from the ocean is simply the y value of those points. So what we want to consider is we want to find out the average y value on that area. So we're going to integrate y with respect to y and x. So we're going to integrate y dy dx. 
And the idea, I think it's important for us to remember back to single variable calculus when we were studying the topic of average values of a function. So here we've got this equation where we're integrating y dy dx and then we're dividing by 1 over the area. We're going back to the idea of average value of a function in single variable. What we did is we integrated a function from a to b and then we divided by b minus a. Same thing here. We're integrating y dy dx and then dividing by the area. That gets rid of the dy dx and it flattens out my y value. It looks at the average y value instead of the fact that it's changing. So I'm integrating that function over the area and then dividing by the area and that gives me the average value of the function. So now what we need to do is we need to consider what are my limits? Well, my y value is going from 0 all the way up to root 9 minus x squared. And we're getting that root 9 minus x squared by going to my original equation, x squared plus y squared equals 9, and solving it for y. So my y upper y value is in terms of x. That's why it's on the inside. So when x is 0, my y, value, my y value is 3. When x is 3, my y value is 0. And when x is in between 0 and 3, uh, my y value is somewhere in between 0 and 3. And my x values are going from negative 3 to 3. So now what we need to do is we need to do the integration. So we integrate y with respect to y, and we're going to get 1 half y squared. So we're just finding the area right here first. Um, we know that my area of a, of a circle is pi r squared. Our radius is 3, so we have 9 pi, but we have to divide it by 2 because it's a semicircle. So that's what that 2 over 9 pi is. And now we're integrating or evaluating the, this double x. Putting that value in, we have the integral from negative 3 to 3. Let's keep my area out in front so I don't forget about it. That's this value here. So when I plug in this value, I'm getting the square squaring something square rooted. So what I'm left with is just 9 minus x squared over 2. And then if I plug 0 in, I'd get 0. So it's just this dx. And I can think of this being split. So this equals 2 over 9 pi times 9 halves x minus x cubed over 6 evaluated from negative 3 to 3, which is 2 over 9 pi times 27 halves minus 27 sixes minus, putting in the negative 3, minus 27 halves plus 27 sixes. And we could simplify that further, but let's just stop there. Let's look at one more idea here, um, and then that's our topic of iterated integrals. And the idea is just to be able to switch our limits of integration. So, uh, you know, whether we want dy dx or dx dy, you know, that we can rearrange this order. Uh, so here we have a, an integrated, iterated integral. It's in terms of y. And so what this is saying, you know, if we look at our region x, y, our lower limit for 
y is x over 3. So that's some line that looks like this. And our upper limit for y is 2. And our x values, so we're going from our lower limit of y is here, and we're going up to y equals 2. And our x values are going from 0 to 6. So my y values start at x over 3, get up to 2, and my x values go from 0 to 6. So that's the region that I'm looking at. If I wanted to rewrite that, if I wanted to rewrite that in terms of dx dy, well, I know that my y values, since my y is on the outer, I know my y values are going from 0 to 2. And my x values are going from 0 all the way to this line. Now this line is, I could rewrite as x equals 3y. So my x values go from x equals 0 all the way to this point, and that point is 3y. So one of the things that you need to be comfortable doing is, is to be given the iterated integral and be able to think about, well, what is this region that we're talking about and be able to re-express the integral by switching dy and dx. So that is the topic of iterated integrals. Thanks for listening.